Hi, this is Claudia from Gamer7, and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to make a basic block of generic procedural buildings with UrbanPad 3.0 and the Simplicity City project. On the main screen, just click Sector and New to begin a new sector template. And once we get on the screen, I'm going to adjust my workspace, and I'm going to verify that my surface is the right size. Now, I'm going to change this 30 by 30 to 15 by 15. This will be the size of one building. And just to note that in this project, all units correspond to one meter. So one unit is one meter, and that gives us a building size of 15 meters by 15 meters for a single block building, which is uh, fairly realistic. So, because this is a simple building, I'm just going to create it using a basic push Z rule to give some height to the building. I'm going to cre uh, connect my base layer to the push Z target. And since I want to randomize the height, I'm going to click random float global. My minimum is 15, my maximum is 28. I'm not going to include a step, so my height will be floating constantly between uh, any value between 15 and 28. I'm just going to regenerate it a few times to show you the variation in the height. Now let's texture it. I'm going to add one texture to my roof. That'll be my top layer. Going to select a texture and I'm going to randomize my texture selection by clicking this little plus sign and continuing to add textures. And this means that every time the building is regenerated the computer is going to pick one of these textures. So we'll just keep adding until we've got about four textures here. Now we're going to do the same thing to the sides with one important exception. Get our rule in place here. Connect the sides to <clears throat> the texture target. I'm going to start off the same way. I'm going to add a basic wall texture. Except this time I'm going to click the global random, uh, the little, the, the global random um, button. And this is going to ensure that the same texture is placed all the way around the buildings. If we don't click this button, we're going to have a uh, possibly four different textures on the same building. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's not quite the look we're going for for this building. So I'm just going to keep adding until I have five. Now I'm going to go to my expanded view and see the final result. As you can see, we have a basic cube, which is going to be our basic building. And as we regenerate, you can see the different variations on color in the roof and the sides, as well as the variation in the height. One thing I forgot to mention is that you should probably name your rules. Uh, this isn't such a big deal in a simple graph like this, but when the graph gets more complicated, uh, you'll need to be able to spot your rules easily and know what they mean so that you don't get lost in the graph. So I'm just going to rename my rules really quickly. And I'm going to add this template to the project database by clicking the green check mark and giving it a title. Let's call it Building Beginner. And when I go to the main screen, there it is. This is part two of creating a block of generic procedural buildings. As we did last time, click Sector and New to begin a new sector template. And again, as we did last time, just verify that your workspace is the right size. 
I put 15 by 15 last time to accommodate a single building and now I'm going to make it 60 by 60 so that we can comfortably fit four buildings around each side of the block. My first rule is going to be a ring rule and true to its name a ring rule basically makes a ring around your base layer. I'm going to increase the size of the ring to 15. So we have a uniform space of 15 units on each side of the block. We can be sure that our buildings are going to fit uh, into this ring. Next I'm going to split the ring and as you'll see uh, it's going to be split into individual lots where I'm going to be able to place buildings. Again I'm going to increase the size to 15. I'm going to choose the perpendicular, tar uh, the perpendicular split type and I have spaces for four buildings on each side. The next step is filtering the layers and filtering is a way to procedurally select your layers. So here I'm going to create an area minimum rule. I'm going to tell the computer to filter my layers based on whether or not they meet an area requirement. I'm going to make this area 120 which not coincidentally is the exact area of our workspace. And next, to all those filtered layers that meet that condition, I'm going to add a sector link. Now, a sector link is one way of composing templates. What you're going to do is apply to all those filtered layers the template that we've just created. Fast, easy way to put your building on the building base. I'm just going to pick up beginner building. link it to our layers and when we go into expand view we're going to see that we have all of our buildings filling up our block space that we just partitioned with the ring rules. We can regenerate and it's easy to see how you can get a lot of diversity and a lot of uh, different shapes and colors out of a basic building type and how in your city this can greatly diversify and vary the look of your city. As we did last time, I'm just going to rename my rules and make them easier to locate so when the graph gets a little more complex in the intermediate and advanced stages, I'll know where I am. I'm going to click the green check mark to add this template to the project database. I'm going to call it Building Beginner Total and save. And when I go to the main screen, there it is in the list of sector templates. If I open it again and I expand it and I don't see it, there's a simple reason. If this happens to you, don't panic. What you probably need to do is readjust the size of your workspace. Remember, we created this on a 60 by 60 space. There it is. The default opening view of Sector Editor right now is 30 by 30, so sometimes you won't see your template. Thanks, stay tuned.